Amy from Doodle Dog Designs. So I want to make an ornamental corn, a little punch needle bowl filler. And so I started off by drawing with my word processor that has some shapes to it. I drew a rounded triangle that's kind of long and skinny. This one is it's about three and five eighths inches long and about two and a fourth inches wide. I'll put a link in the description below to this pattern so you can print it out and use it if you want or you can draw your own based on what size you want. I punched this with my Smart Punch. I used a variegated DMC floss. It is number 111. When I first started punching it, I was punching around in circles and I realized that it looked kind of funny from the front. I needed really needed it to be in straight lines to look like little rows of corn. So I had to take it all out and then I repunched it again, just doing straight lines. I'm going to finish this like I finish a bowl filler. So I'm going to cut around the edges and leave about a quarter inch or so. I'm using my pinking shears. That helps keep the fabric from raveling. And now I'm going to press the empty weaver's cloth to the back of the project with my iron. So I have the empty weaver's cloth pressed to the back and then I'm going to use a piece of felted wool for the backing. So I could either take this and use it as the pattern or I can just put the piece onto a piece of felted wool and cut it out that way and I'm going to do that today. This is a natural colored piece of felted wool that I have done a little bit of aging to to give it more of a primitive look. I'll smooth out the scissor lines a little bit. So now I'm going to hand sew it together. I'm going to use thread that matches the wool backing. I want to leave my opening on this end here, so I'm going to start right in here, and I'm going to bring the needle up behind between the folded over weaver's cloth and the punched part, and then that way my knot will be back in there. And then I'm just going to do a whip stitch where I catch the, I'm going to catch the folded over edge of the weaver's cloth and the very edge of the felted wool and not catch any of the loops, the punch loops. And I try to use my finger to hold the loops back to keep them out of the way. got the two long sides sewn up and I've left the bottom open. I'm just going to stuff it now with some just fiber fill type stuffing. And then I'm going to finish sewing it up just like I have been using the whip stitch. I 
I finished sewing up the corn and I have this paper, it's twisted raffia, and I'm going to cut a piece that's just a little bit longer than my corn, probably about right there. It is six inches long. And then this stuff just untwists. So then this will make one of my leaves for my corn. Probably need at least one more. I'm going to take one of the leaves and wrap it around one side here. And then I'll take the other one and wrap it around the other side. But first I think I'm going to angle these to make them kind of look like the top of leaves so I'm just going to cut them so I'm going to wrap one leaf around on either side and the leaves overlaps on both the front and the back then I'm going to gather this bottom edge here together and I'm going to take a piece of jute Tie it down here at the bottom, then I'm going to wrap it around several times. Then I'm going to tie it again. Then I'll stick the corn in there again. Then I'm going to take another piece of jute. Tie it around up here, then a little bow. This paper is very easy to mold into place, so I'm going to just scrunch it in so that it looks like it is this husk of an ear of corn. And if you wanted, you could glue the corn in instead of adding the bow there. That would also work well. I hope you found that helpful. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe below. I'll see you next time. Bye.